Eight-time major champion, six-time player of the year, World Golf Hall of Famer Tom Watson on set with us here. Mr. Watson, it's a true honor uh, to be sitting alongside you here talk a little bit of the game on what is really a celebration of it here. Uh, looking it really sharp, is. I looking mean, sharp in your polo. I tell you, yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I've been with him for 30 years. We had an anniversary party last night, so the uh, – just amazing. I haven't been to a merchandise show for I don't know how many years, but it is. We have 800 exhibitors this year, and it's 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 exciting. It's you know it, you see the you know the excitement of everybody here is is special. So I'm interested on your perspective on that because we've come a long way since the Ram Musclebacks were in the bag. Yes, that's right. Uh, the intersection the tour of grind. There you go. Yeah. The intersection of golf and technology right now. Uh, how do you process that? I mean, has it kept you? Oh, it's been great for the game. In the game, yeah. Been, it's made it easier to play. Mm -hmm. I mean, the uh, you know the, the perimeter-weighted clubs, uh, the metal heads, which are perimeter-weighted clubs, the lightweight uh, shafts versus the old dynamic shafts, which were, you know, that you, our driver that we used back in those days is nearly 14 ounces, mm -hmm. and now the drivers today are in in the 11 up, upper 11s, and you can swing them faster, you can hit it farther, and everybody wants to hit the ball farther, right? Farther, faster. You, you see that. You see <laughs> uh, every manufacturer. I can hit, you hit the ball farther, faster, straighter, things like that. But uh, there's a, there's an element of truth of that. You know, the, you know, the technology has really helped it make it you know, make it easier for the golfer to play. You've been involved in so many different areas of the game, playing and Ryder Cups and architecture. So many so many different things. What? today still gives still like juices you up still gets you going and makes you excited specifically well i still i still love playing the game yeah i still do is and that I'm, tournament I'm golf or I'm, I'm a golfer i still you know i wake up and i'm you know, i'm a golfer and uh, you know i have other, other things in my life obviously but i uh, i gave it at all my, my all in, in the game of golf earlier on in my career to try to be the best i could be and um, it still doesn't leave me. When I play a game of golf, I still, you know, I still really enjoy a, a perfectly struck shot, mm. which it doesn't happen more than uh, maybe once a month. Uh, and you know, but going out to practice and getting into a rhythm where you hit good shot after good shot, I enjoy that. Uh, wish my putting was any was mm. a lot better. My putting <laughs> stinks all. now, man. <laughs> I used to be a great putter, but I can't putt worth a lick anymore. Well, on the topic of short game, I was sharing with Kyle before you came and sat down with us. My first experience at Pebble Beach, about five years ago, I'm shooting scenics. I got the camera on my shoulder, getting some shots, and I tripped over something behind 17. And there's a plaque there. And I looked down at it, and I sort of had a moment of, wow, this is this place. That was that moment. And I always remember hair blowing in the wind and the player you were at times like that. What about the moment? What about those days in the weather brought the best out of you well i've been known as a you know, bad weather good mm -hmm. bad weather player but, but i grew up in kansas city so you know when i was really getting you know, uh, my feet wet in, on the tour uh, i stayed in kansas city and practiced and it didn't matter what type of weather it was but so, because i enjoyed hunting bird hunting and you, you always you knew how to dress for that you know, quail hunted, you didn't dress as warmly as you did when you were sitting in a duck blind where you had to dress a lot warmer. So I knew how to dress for it. And I always loved coming out on the tour when the weather turned cold because you know, I had all these guys from Florida or mm. California, and when it turned cold, I don't want to go out and play in that cold <laughs> weather like this. And it, that was right up my alley. I love that. Who in the game today, you know, you're referencing about your career of being – uh, tough and and just like grinding and 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 being a bad weather good bad weather player. Who in the game today most reminds you of that? Just in terms of maybe their throwback, old school, a little bit tougher yeah, than everybody else. You look at else. the attitudes, uh, the attitude of the players. They you know they they get it. You know the, the players get it. And at uh, you know you look at the run that John Rahm has made. You look at Scotty Scheffler's run earlier last year. Uh, there are going to be runs, but you know. It's the determining factor is how long is your career and how good are you throughout the entire career. You know, Jack was great at that. You know, he, he wanted, and when he's 46 years old at Augusta, 
Uh, he had a long career. My career basically spanned about seven years when I really could play. And uh, yeah, then it kind of fell off you know, the deep end and uh, I never really competed very well after that. Uh, you know, I played some pretty good golf, but not to the you know, where I was in those seven years. So, and, and if you look back at most people's careers, they, they only have a, a shorter period of time where they really shine. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky to shine for that long. Why? 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 Because that's true of Arnold Palmer's career, right? He yeah. all of his majors were in this yeah, seven years short time span. And I've thought about that as it relates to Rory and Dustin Johnson, whose careers. I mean, Rory's been number one 15 years apart, which mm -hmm. is pretty extraordinary. Yeah, it is. What? what why are most careers so, like the height of most careers in such a short period of time? Well, you know, I think a lot of it has to do with uh, you know the the, uh, the physical fitness, the, tr the ethic that the players have today, and it was brought on basically by Tiger when he you know the, everybody saw him transition from '96 to '97 from a skinny kid into this he's like that, and uh, everybody wanted to be like Tiger. What was Tiger doing? Well, he was working out four hours a day. Yeah. And playing golf. Mm -hmm. And we never did that when we were growing up. We were kind of told, the, you, know, you don't lift weights, you don't do that. My workout ethic was you know, basically hitting three, four, five hundred golf balls a day. Which is, yeah, that's, that's, that's a darn good workout, but it mm -hmm. wasn't the <laughs> physical training that these guys do today. I looked at John Rahm on, you know, on Twitter yesterday, and he's, he, you know, he's doing, uh, uh, leg, you know, he's doing big lifts with his legs, with big weight, you know, and you know that, you know that, that, that's the type of things I think that will, will extend your career. Mm. Yeah, I really do. Whatever the duration may have been that you assigned to your height, you assembled a career that has lived on generations and continues to be celebrated. Do you give yourself the space and the time to step back and look at what you have created when you look at your legacy, the way you are celebrated by people who? We're not around to watch you play the game in those years. I honestly, I don't look at a legacy. I don't. I uh, all I want to, you know, I've said this and is, yeah, said all I want to do is be considered by my peers as a pretty darn good golfer. That's mm. that's what I wanted. I want that reputation. And you know, that Watson, he was a hell of a golfer. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't look back on it. Unless I'm talking to people like you, and you bring <laughs> these things up, you know, like okay. a chip in at Pebble Beach or. We like to celebrate. Well, we like to celebrate. I understand. <laughs> I understand that, um, and it's, it's 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 fun to talk about it mm -hmm. and things like that and relive the memories. Uh, but I don't wake up in the morning thinking about the chip in at Pebble Beach. No, I don't. What do you wake up in the morning thinking about? Uh, I, well, uh, feeding my dogs. <laughs> uh, you know, letting them out, and uh, you know, just uh, you know, I, you know. Current events, things like that, and then you know, get the day started. Yeah. What in terms of golf, though? Like what we're talking about the past. When you look toward the future, talking about architecture, talking about different things, mm -hmm. what excites you about the future of, of your? Well, what excites me about the future of the golf is what's happened over the past two years with COVID. Uh, you see, I see in Kansas City where I live, the golf course are chock golf courses are chock a block full of golfers, and uh, it's a bubble. We, I think we understand, but how do we sustain that bubble? My actual goal in life is, you know, as a golfer is to create more lifetime golfers. It started mm -hmm. way back when. when the, honestly, when the caddies uh, you know, were eliminated in favor of the carts, I said, where are the, where are the, where are the people, where are the real people going to come from, uh, like a Lee Trevino, to come in and, 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 and be, the, be at the top? They don't have the opportunities. And how do you give these kids the opportunity? Well, start off with a with a program where you built three three small holes and a, and a junior program to get these kids uh, initiated into the game and get them up to play in the game. And it's evolved all the way through the first tee youth on course. Started a, a Lynx mentor program where I I get mentors to go out with the young kids to play golf and have fun and teach them skills out there. And now there's a, you know, a program involved with building Wee Links, which on an acre of land, 150 yard total length of, of six hmm. holes, six holes, I'm six in inch cups, yeah. five foot flags, artificial tees, so you don't mess them up, and very easily maintained, very cheap to build, and build these 
these wee links around it. You see them in, you see the wee links, you call them wee links in, uh, in Scotland, Ireland, mm-hmm. places where they, they have created golf for people to go play. And I want to do this, you know, get people started in the game. It goes back to a conversation that I've had, I had with Ben Crenshaw. Uh, I heard that he had a conversation when he went out to get his first lesson from Harvey Penny, the great teacher, the little red book, Harvey yeah. Penny. He went with his dad. Harvey looked down at Ben like this in his bag. He said, Ben, I want you to take your seven iron and your putter. You see that green over there? I want you to go take a, one ball. I want you to chip the ball on the green with your seven iron and go put it the ball in the hole. That was his first lesson. And he said two months later he had his next lesson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what Ben said is very profound. He said, Harvey taught me the essence of the game of golf. Yeah. Go from point A into that hole. From a short period, you know, a short, short distance, but that's the essence. Then you expand it back to, you know, with the rest of the game. But that's the essence of the game. That's what we're trying to do with the wee links. 30-yard holes. Go out there, two clubs. You take a nine iron and a putter, and just go out and play. And I think it in takes the, 15 minutes or 20 minutes to play six holes. Yeah, well, you, we were talking. We've been talking about it all week. The places that the game can go in that space where we're one playing. acre, one acre space time. It's a couple of the barriers. Not too expensive, but yeah. it gives. It really gives kids mm-hmm. an opportunity to go have fun, to play to get together or with their parents. Just go on and play golf. Which, you know, they, you don't get on a big golf course and, and okay, you hit, get, hit yeah. 17 shots before mm-hmm. they get to the green when they're five years old. Yeah. <laughs> no, they've got 30 yards. My five-year-old hey, they, takes, may, they may get on the green and one. Who knows? <laughs> My five-year-old takes more than 17 shots. You've got you've got me wound up now because I am so I'm fired up. I'm so against this this like track man era of like everybody hits the same shots and i think doing something like that it teaches you to hit you know what the most interesting thing in golf right now is uh tiger and rory and jt and speed playing a one club challenge on yeah. a hole because it teaches you to hit different shots yeah, right i used to do that in japan all the time in exhibition matches with the Oki and jumbo ozaki and we we, we play we play one hole with you know with, in, in the exhibition with the one club what was the club of choice Mine was always a four iron. Okay. But Isaiah Oki one time took a driver. <laughs> that's a that's a bad choice. <laughs> and he hit it he hit it in the bunker in front of the green. That's not good. It's hard to get out of a bunker with ride a driver. That lift. With, I'm with just an, I'm just saying. with an eight degree face. And we were laughing. We were on the ground laughing and trying to get out of the bunker with a driver. <laughs> so could you could you turn a could you turn a four iron over and pop it up? Oh sure. Like yeah. what what's the shortest distance you could hit a four iron? Yeah, for me to you. <laughs> <laughs> and get it up in the air. I think yeah. we could get a yeah. four iron. I think we could. <laughs> well, Mickelson is great at that. I mean, yeah. he hits yeah, it right he over is, your head. He you know, yeah. you stand right next to you. It feels like a lot of what we're talking about here comes back to the idea and the mission of growing the game. And well, making... it's having fun. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the thing. We got to, you know, you don't want to get too you know, indoctrinated in teaching the skills and like that. You've got to get them out there to play golf. Yeah. That's what the Wii Links will do. They'll get them out there, young kids. Give them an opportunity to, okay, I, I can hit a golf ball, but you, have, you know, there's the object right there. There's this hole over here. See, and then they get, you know, then they get excited about, okay, I can do this in three shots. Yep. You know, and that's you know, that's teaching them, like Ben said, that's the essence of the game. I love that. Get the ball in the hole. Right. And when there is all of this technology around us, it simply boils down to that. Mr. Watson, we cannot thank you enough for taking some time with us here on CBS. Enjoy the opportunity to speak. Thank you. It's great. Take care.